I was called Howie the Harp because uh, when I was on the streets, one of the ways that I made money was by playing the harmonica. I was a street musician. And uh, people started calling me Howie the Harp, and it kind of stuck. So that's my name. I kind of like the name because it gives me the same middle name as a lot of famous people in history, like uh, Ivan the Terrible, Richard Lionhearted, and Winnie the Pooh. This, this is the tools of my trade, or the tool of my trade. <laughs> Most homeless people are fiercely independent. Uh, Patrick Henry said, give me liberty or give me death. But the vast majority of people who have psychiatric histories are homeless because they were incarcerated in a mental hospital and before they were, they had a home. And, and during that time, your S if you're getting SSI, you lose your SSI once you're in an institution for more than a calendar month. Since you lost the SSI and you have no other income, you have no way of paying the rent. So wherever it is you're living is lost. And then when you finally are ready to go out of the hospital, uh, you have really nowhere to go other than the board and care homes that they send most people to. And most of the homeless population are people that don't live well in board and care homes. And uh, most of the people that come to this program won't go to any other program. This is the only one that they'll go to because this is the only one that they trust. Because it's run by people like them very often. It's the people working here are people that they knew out when they were out on the streets. Mama, mama, I heard my baby cry. Don't want to stay here. I had been in mental hospitals, uh, several mental hospitals from the time I was 13 till I was 16. I was told when I was 16 that I would be there for another two years and then maybe they would release me, but more likely they would send me back to the state hospital. Uh, the reason why I got involved with the mental patient self-help movement was for a number of reasons, uh, one of which because I was very angry. Uh, I had an incredible sense of outrage at the fact that uh, I was treated so badly for those three years. There was a woman by the name of Dorothy Wainer who was living in Portland, Oregon, who had this idea that uh, the way she was treated in mental hospitals and the way other people were treated in mental hospitals wasn't right, and uh, that there were better ways that people should be treated, and there were alternatives that people needed to be created, uh, alternatives to mental hospitals, to the psychiatric system. And uh, later on, she got uh, some articles printed in a local underground paper called the Willamette Bridge and brought together some people in a group called the Insane Liberation Front. Uh, this is in late 1970, early 71. And uh, <coughs> basically, uh, they tried to distribute literature in mental hospitals, and they had an 11 point program, because a lot of people had 10 point programs, and that's a different, um, an 11 point program that involved uh, things like an end to involuntary commitment, an end to forced drugging, um, uh, information about medications, alternatives, which you would call freak out centers that are now called drop in centers or client run centers. Uh, a lot of the same things that the movement is believing in now. The real first conference people felt was in Topeka, Kansas, yeah. which is kind of legendary in the movement because it was such an idea. It was the most idyllic conference. It was the, really the first time, uh, in a sense, the second time because they had met in Detroit, but in many ways the first time that people from all around the country, uh, a lot of groups had gotten started by then, and people from all around the country met each other for the first time. And, uh, started networking with each other for the first time and developing a movement, a national movement for the first time. It was in Topeka. Um, and it was, uh, Topeka, Kansas, by the way, at, uh, at the time was known as the psychiatric capital of the world because uh, managers are there and Topeka State Hospital in there is there and it's they're the main employer of everybody in the, in the city. Uh, I remember we uh, covered over the sign that said psychiatric capital of the world with a sign for our conference and and we had heard after that the sign came down mm -hmm. uh, mysteriously and it's never been put back up. Uh, so Topeka, Kansas is no longer the psychiatric capital of the world. One of the things that I've always tended to do, I always like to say that my first experience with self-help was while I was in a mental hospital. Um, 
while I was in a mental hospital, the kind of, I got a lot of help from the other patients, the other inmates, despite the staff. When I was homeless in California, I started working with other homeless people. And the fact that I was homeless meant to me that I was most qualified yeah. to, to work with other homeless people and try to do something about the problem. In fact, it's always been that the people most affected by the problem are always the ones most effective at handling it. So we started a program, and the program was attracting homeless people way beyond its funding. Uh, that and a similar program called the Berkeley Drop-In Center was uh, doing a lot of things for homeless people that other programs couldn't do because homeless people wouldn't go to the other programs. They would only go to programs run by people like themselves. So the county uh, decided that they were progressive enough to realize that if you can't force people into programs that really don't work, you might as well create programs that do work that people want to go to. And they were seeing that self-help programs were programs that people wanted to go to, so they we were able to get them to apply for a federal block grant for a self-help program for homeless sex patients. And uh, we got the grant, and that started the Oakland Independence Support Center, which is uh, a client-run, multi-service community center. We opened our doors on July 4th, 1986, mm -hmm. um, mostly because at that time uh, they were having the celebration about the Statue of Liberty, and part of the poem that Emma Lazarus wrote about the Statue of Liberty had to do with the homeless. So we figured while they were celebrating the Statue of Liberty and not doing anything for the homeless in this country, that we would at least open up our center. The solution is independent living because these folks want to live in their own places. And I believe that it should be a person's right, it should be a basic human right to have a decent place to live. I tried from day to day. Yeah. Oh,